Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Kamalangunda Nom Ledger, and on this channel, School Mama Reality TV shows of my celebrities and in my YouTubers. So you guys, I just watched an interview. It's an SAPC interview. I think it was like Channel Four or Four, where um Anele Tembe's father was doing an interview with Chriselda Lois. Okay, and you guys, I think this interview was done around the time when the library was open because the first part of the interview is him talking about Anele, just who Anele was and why they decided that the opening the library in her name uh, was a, a, a good idea and a good thing for them to remember Anele. And, and then they do get into, you know, what's happening with the case, you know, the inquest, uh, uh, the inquest about Anela's passing and also the case guy, AKA. And it's an interesting one, you guys. I'm going to put a clip on here. Obviously, YouTube Baghetti is very strict, so I can't put the whole interview on there. Okay, but I'll, I'll see if I can put like the most important parts of uh, the interview. Listen, you guys, I think we cannot uh, ever take away the fact that uh, this man was heartbroken uh, after losing his daughter the same way that, you know, Mr. Forbes is heartbroken for losing, or a.k.a. these are parents that lost their children and we can't take that away from them and we can't even say that we understand how they would grieve their children, okay? He does say, you guys, that when AKA was introduced to the family, there is nothing that he can say or point out that he can say, okay, this is something that was wrong with AKA. He never did anything wrong in front of him. And he said that he had accepted oh, AKA as Anela's fiance. And he said he liked him, even says that he loved him. And as far as he knows, he was a good guy. He wouldn't have done anything to Anela. However, you guys, he does mention later on to say, listen, um, yes, it's not like as the family, they are saying that AKA did something, but they can't, you can't take away the fact that the person that was in that room with Anneli at the time was AKA. And we have to remember that Anneli was alive for like four hours after, you know, the incident of her falling or jumping, depending on what the truth is. And there are things that happened around that time that made them feel like they need uh, some answers. He says that he would have loved to see uh, AKA in the dock, whether he, were, he would be in the dock because he would be one of the um, witnesses or he would be in the dock as the accused. But he says that as it stands, there's nothing that he can point at to say, yes, uh, AKA did something to my child. Here's the evidence. He wanted the law to do what the law is supposed to do, which is find evidence and uh, present it to the courts. And then, you know, whatever decision that is made, they were going to accept it. So in a way, you guys, he's not saying, listen, AKA, I know for sure AKA is guilty because I think the way that he is answering these uh, questions is very diplomatic. Uh, but also, he's not saying that uh, AKA is innocent. He's saying that, listen, uh, there are things that happened that made us as a family feel like there is foul play. And we were not the only people that thought that there was foul play. Even the police at the time said that there was foul play. And then the fact that later on, everybody now um, was like, no, it wasn't. Uh, nothing was done. She took her own life. Now, of course, as a family... It doesn't add up. And the person that was there with her is AKA. So, so shouldn't he uh, in at most be a weakness? Okay. The sad thing, you guys, is that AKA is no longer here. So even if uh, the inquest is concluded and they feel like, okay, uh, somebody should have been charged uh, criminally, uh, who will be charged at this point when AKA is no longer living. So maybe the, the inquest now is just for them to give the answers. In the article that I read this morning, you guys, on the Sunday World, it did sound like uh, the family Agatembe is now frustrated with the Forbes family because they're feeling like they are not providing the information that is being required in order to move, or move forward with the inquest of uh, Anele's uh, passing. 
but in this interview you guys he is more uh specific to say there are certain individuals who are working on this inquest that have not done what they were supposed to do so he's not necessarily blaming the forbes family but he's just saying there are certain individuals that haven't done what they're supposed to do they haven't done a good job in uh, uh this inquest and that's what he is unhappy about you guys and listen it's a sad thing you guys because say that the inquest moves forward it comes to a conclusion and the conclusion is yeah something you know funny was done here or something criminal was criminal was done here how what does that give uh the demi family if aka is no longer alive this is also where he also emphasizes like i say in the beginning of the video that he said that listen he had accepted aka he liked and loved aka like his son the whole family treated him like a son at that point. And so even when it comes to Anela, they do feel like the person that would have the answers would be AKA. So with all of the accusations that are coming now about, you know, uh, when it comes to AKA's passing, would that make sense for them to want AKA gone when he is the person that they were looking forward to hearing from? He says they were looking forward to hearing from AKA, whether he was coming in as the witness or he was coming in as the accused, but they were looking forward to him taking a stand in court at some point. So does it make sense to even uh, be thinking that it's them who have done something to him because they wanted, basically, I think he's saying they wanted AKA alive so that he could be uh, held accountable if there was anything to be held accountable uh, for you guys. I think the situation is so, so uh, complicated, you guys. I know other people think that it's a straightforward uh, case. You know, Anele passed away. They blamed AKA, so they did something. So AKA, end of story. But I think it's a lot more complicated than that, you guys. They're definitely still pushing for an inquest, which is another thing, you guys, because I feel like if really the Dembe family had paid revenge by what happened with AKA, shouldn't they be now, you know, be like, okay, case closed because, you know, we paid revenge. Now AKA is not around. Now we're good. Okay. Why are they still pushing for this inquest into Anneli's passing? So there are a lot of parts, you guys, uh, to this part. The bottom line is that the two parents here that lost uh, their kids, and they both don't know what happened and the people that really would give answers have already left and they are together in heaven probably even having a good time in heaven while everybody else is trying to figure out what the hell is uh, going on okay he does say you guys as far as people accusing him of doing something when it comes to aka and his passing, he says, listen, the police have not approached me with anything. And I don't think that they would. I understand why they haven't approached me with anything. Because, you know, there's nothing to approach me about. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you guys, it doesn't sound like he's going to say. Anyway, even if he did something, he wouldn't be coming out here and saying, yes, I did something. But he's just saying, listen, his focus seemed to be on uh his daughter how did his daughter uh pass away because he says that anele was somebody that loved life there's no way that he he loved life she loved life anele and also he is saying that oh, anele loved herself i guess maybe he was she was a person that was a lot uh concerned about uh how she looks that for him it doesn't make sense that she would uh, strip naked and then jump you know because then she would know that she would be found naked lying uh on the side of the road and you guys i did feel like it was really sad to hear him talk about how he had about adela's passing he said that his brothers came to tell him at the same time the story was running on the news and he actually they actually got to see uh Anele by the side of the road uh covered in foil 
that that's a sight that no parents wants to see but anyway you guys the interview was on channel 404 maybe they will bring it here on youtube for you to watch the full interview but i will put a clip here so that you can see for yourself what they were talking about anyway thank you so much for watching this video please like it before we're gonna share it with your friends with your family and even with strangers in a tanda kakon I knew nothing about Kinan. Uh, I'm not into this type of uh, uh, music. Um, uh, but I said, viewers, uh, if you could perform with the orchestra, uh, it must be this must be something. And to that point, uh, whatever that people were saying uh, later about him, uh, I gave him the uh, the benefit of doubt right up to the uh, uh, last day. So. So I, I, I loved Kinan so much. And uh, to that point, uh, for us as a family, uh, me in particular, you know, um, as some kind of uh, head of that family, mm -hmm. I kept on saying to my children, to my parents and everyone who was affected by this, it's important to treat Kinan like a like our own child, so that we can actually be objective as this process uh, starts. So, so that was our attitude, and that continues to be our attitude to, to this day. Um, I object to anyone uh, who suggests that Kinan killed our daughter. I'm saying we need to lead evidence, and the evidence uh, will tell us exactly uh, what happened? Well, I recall um, after um, uh, Keenan, aka Forbes, had been killed, there was a lot of wild speculation about uh, who may be behind um, his murder. Um, your name had also been thrown around. I'm sure you've seen that on social media. Uh, would you want to respond to that? At all, it, it, it is unfortunate, and obviously, it is a painful experience when you hear people making those insinuations and uh, making those allegations. As I said to you, these type of allegations um, are in the social media, and uh, people who make those allegations are faceless. Uh, uh, people, as you know, no one comes forward and say, look, I've got this evidence. In fact, I'm basing my uh, allegation on these facts. Police, no doubt about it, uh, we all have been reading uh, uh, about this case. Police, uh, I think, um, uh, you know, they've investigated the matter. Uh, I've, they've never approached me, um, uh, and I'm not surprised they've never approached me. Uh, but I have no doubt that they've in investigated this matter uh, quite uh, thoroughly, and uh, people who had any evidence, um, shred of evidence around uh, what happened there, I'm sure. Uh, they've been interviewed by by the police. So so really, I have been saying to our family, we can choose to comment on what faceless people are saying, or or keep trusting uh, the legal uh, system of this country that uh, they will come to uh, the conclusion that will give the Forbes family a uh, closure. But let me also touch on this matter at a high level. Uh, uh, no doubt you are aware that this is a matter which is sub care, and no one uh, wants to say anything that influences um, uh, the process in any uh, uh, fashion. And uh, I'm certainly not here uh, to defend uh, myself or the name of uh, uh, our family. Uh, I can tell you now that uh, anyone who 
knows our family very well, uh, who knows me very, very well, uh, is not among uh, the faceless people who are making those insinuations. I think at the right time as well, once that legal process has been completed, uh, as a country, we need to reflect uh, on the rationale behind killing someone because he has wronged you. You know, I did indicate to you that uh, that inquest and closure for the family will never be complete uh, without uh, uh, Kinen. Uh, if there is one family that wanted Kinen alive, uh, it's our family to see him there with his own mouth telling us exactly uh, what happened on that uh, uh, fateful day. They like to